If you guys will pray with me. Lord, uh, may you hide me behind the cross. May you be heard and be glorified in this time. In your son's name, amen. amen. So starting in Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? It's a big question. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And it's not a rhetorical question. Jesus expected an answer when he asked this question. And we have a duty to know who people say the Son of Man is. We have a duty to know what the people of the world view Jesus as. Who do our friends view Jesus as? And the disciples answer. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Guys, this isn't a bad list of people. I mean, Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, these are big names in the faith. But they're good people. They aren't the son of God. They aren't the living God. And this is where so many people miss it. They're content To stop at Jesus being a good man. The world doesn't say Jesus wasn't a good man. It's historically recorded, even in the Roman history, of what he did. People will agree with you that Jesus was a good man. But try to make him the son of God who can save you. That's when people start to get a little bent out of shape. People don't mind that you keep Christ in Christmas as long as you keep him there as a baby in a manger. Try to bring them into the new year. Try to bring them into every day of your life. That's when people get upset. So, who are these people that think this way? This is your Muslim friend, your Buddhist friend, your atheist friend. Bring it closer to home. This is your Christian friend, Christian friend, who is content to sit in church and not be transformed by God. That's who this is that's saying Jesus was one of these good men. So while you're wrestling with that, if that's not enough to wrestle with, Jesus asked a huge question with huge implications. He said to them, who do you say that I am? That question changes everything. We can know what others say, but who do I say that Jesus is? So take a second and think about it in your head. Who do you say that Jesus is? Do you really believe that? Peter jumps up and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now, this is the same Peter who will later deny him three times. But Peter, in this moment, knows Jesus is the son of God. And in his heart, he is sure of that. Nothing is changing that. He is living that out. Now, to kind of tell a story or an illustration for this, uh, Let's imagine this guy, he wants to learn how to go skydiving. So he buys the parachute, the best parachute money can buy. He talks to his friends who have gone skydiving before, learns from their experiences. He even gets the tandem jumps. He's going on the training, does all the training with the tandem jumps. He's done all this stuff, and he's ready for his first solo jump. Jumps out of the airplane, he knows everything, he's got everything together, he's ready to go. He never pulls the pull cord. (laughs) Does it surprise you that he hits the ground? (laughs) No. It's the same thing in our lives. We can have all the training we want. We can have all the right things. People can look at us and say, this guy knows what he's doing. We can have the right equipment, the right things, but that does not mean that we know Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So... What does this mean? This means that it's something more than what we know. It's something more than what we do. It is a transformation in our lives. So, (coughs) Hebrews 11.1 says, Now faith is the reality of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. It doesn't say faith is your ideas, your beliefs. It says it's the reality of things hoped for. If we say we hope Christ, we have hope in Christ as our Savior, there's reality in that. It's not our beliefs, it's not our ideas, it's who we are. It's our reality. Proof of things not seen. No one can see God, 
but they should be able to see him in you. And that's the proof of things not seen. So now Jesus continues and tells Peter what this revelation means for his life. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So once again, salvation is not from what we see from each other. It's not from what we've been taught by flesh and blood. It's not what we've been taught by going to church every Sunday. It is a relationship with Christ that is only through the Father. That is what salvation is. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I tell you, you are Jacob, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. This is saying that when we've accepted Christ, when we've come to this realization that Christ is truly the Son of the living God, nothing can overcome us. We have the power of the living God inside of us, and there is nothing that can prevail against it. So why do we get caught up in insecurities and all these little things, worrying about, am I doing the right thing? Am I looking good to that person? What, what drives this? We have God inside of us, and if we are living for him, it doesn't matter what this guy thinks or what this guy thinks. It matters that we know he is the son of the living God and that we say that with our actions every day in our lives. So he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's saying, Christ here is saying that what you do for the kingdom of God is eternal. What you loose in order to help the kingdom of God is eternal. Whatever you allow Christ to do through you is eternal. And anything you do outside of what Christ is doing in you is passing away. It will not last. For this reason, we live to serve Christ in all that we do. For this reason, we are transformed every day. We die to ourselves and we live for the kingdom of heaven. Now, through that transformation, we are proclaiming Christ. And because of that, He will be glorified in us because He is living inside of us and we have realized Him as the Son of the living God. Like Peter said, you are the Son of the living God. Peter went on to deny Christ three times. We will go on to mess up. We will go on and in our daily lives, we will have things that we mess up on. And in that time, we will say, I don't know Christ. That's what we're saying when we fall outside of this revelation of who Christ is in our lives. But we are secure in the fact that we do know he is the son of the living God. If you'll pray with me. Dear Lord, uh, I just thank you for this opportunity to have shared your word, Lord. And I pray that we will all be challenged to live daily transformed by the fact that you are the son of the living God and that we won't just say that, but it will be our life, Lord. In your son's name, amen.